Hello there. Uh, I've not made a video in a while uh, because of some big changes in my professional life. But today, after discussing this topic with uh, with a good friend of mine, I thought it was a good time to um, make a video about the topic. And the topic is corner balancing. So what is corner balancing? So you can see this card that is um, uh, perched on some weighing, weighing scales. So each one has a load cell that is measuring the load on that um, weighing scale basically and uh, by playing around with the height of the spring purchase uh, you can shift the uh, the load that is on each corner of the vehicle and um, the reason and so here you can see the cross weight is 50 percent uh, which is perfect um, and uh, but you'll notice that uh, the right hand side are a little bit lighter than the left hand side but uh, that's something that you don't have much influence on it's just um, as a result of for example where the engine is placed and things like that um, it's not yeah that's not something you can really influence with the corner balancing so why do you do corner, corner balancing anyway um, it's especially important when fitting an aftermarket suspension that's stiffer than the regular um, uh, suspension that comes from the factory and so as mentioned it's to get to an even cross weight and the reason you do that is to avoid asymmetrical handling so by asymmetrical handling what I mean is if you turn left uh, you might have understeer and if you then turn right you might have oversteer so nobody wants that you want a car that's predictable uh, so you want a car that is um, not really changing in its handling balance uh, yeah whether you're turning left or right so uh, if you prefer some understeer then you want the car to be understeered both uh, turning left and right uh, and the same if you if you like some oversteer then you should get the same amount whether you're turning left or right so um, so yeah the the even cross weight we, we mentioned so what is shown here is a very uneven cross weight uh, actually very very extreme where 60% of all the mass uh, um, yeah 60% of the sprung mass is uh, uh, sorry 60% of the mass is on <laughs> one diagonal and uh, only 40% on the other diagonal. Um, so also you want to do the corner balancing while still maintaining the correct ride height. So it's not good if you get to a very even um, load, but then your ride height is all over the place. Um, so you want to finish with 25, uh, so you, you want to finish with an even cross, uh, cross loading, 50% uh, on one diagonal. Um, while maintaining the correct right height both front and rear and, and on each corner so that um, your row centers and so on are also correct and you know you have the same uh, suspension travel uh, on each side so uh, yeah perhaps important to mention what corner balancing isn't for so it's not to change the front rear weight balance uh, so that's something which is pretty much set from the factory unless you have a racing car in which you can move the some ballast around uh, so in a normal car uh, where you cannot really change the uh, weight balance it's just yeah result of the design where the engine is placed uh, if you have a you know a 911 with a heavy engine in the rear then you'll have more rear weight balance whereas if you have a hot hatch front wheel drive engine in front um, the front's going to be heavier and there's nothing you can really um, do about it using corner balancing the only thing you could do is maybe shift um, your battery around if you have a very heavy lead acid battery you could maybe move that to a different position in your vehicle to change the uh, front to rear weight balance but not by not by a great deal uh, you could you know maybe shift your um, seating position if you have um, uh, pedal boxes which uh, shift with the uh, which you can also shift the position of but that's also pretty rare so in general you cannot really change the front to rear weight balance um, the other thing you, 
corner balancing isn't for is to change the uh, weight balance from left to right. Uh, so that, uh, as mentioned, that's kind of set from factory as well, depending on your engine placement, um, where all the heavy bits are in the car, and it's yeah, it's kind of set. And also depending on the weight of the people that are sitting in the car, then uh, that's going to be sh shift as well. If you have a very um, heavy passenger, um, then yeah, you you have a bit more load on the right hand side. So uh, I remember there was quite a funny video um, uh, some month ago where one driver was, you know, blaming his um, somewhat overweight friend uh, for for the fact that he crashed on the Nurburgring. Um, <laughs> that was yeah. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, the left to right you cannot really use corner balancing to uh, to change that. So there there are minor effects from the horizontal shift in the um, central gravity position. So um, if there is some pitch or roll angle in the vehicle um, that you're changing due to the corner balancing, then uh, there will be some minor shifts in the front to rear and left to right um, uh, corner loads. But uh, in general, that's not uh, yeah, it's only a minor effect. Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, where the um, so where's the origin of this weight imbalance? So you have to think of a table uh, to start with. So table has very stiff legs, and so if you imagine uh, if the legs are not all exactly the same length, uh, you just put a small stone under one leg, uh, then you'll end up with the weight of the vehicle being supported by uh, just two legs. So uh, in in this illustration here, um, the entire weight of the of the of the table uh, is supported by this leg, uh, you know, half, and the other half on this leg, whereas the other two legs are not are not doing anything. And um, uh, so, if you had three legs, it would be uh, there wouldn't be this problem, but because a table has four legs, uh, it's uh, it's a lot more difficult to balance. Uh, so a ve a a vehicle is uh, quite similar to a table, but uh, the situation is a lot easier to deal with because you don't have stiff legs; you have elastic legs. So the the legs um, so the suspension in the in a vehicle there's some elasticity. There's also elasticity in the um, in the tire sidewall, uh, but okay, the the, maj the majority of the suspension um, uh, elasticity is coming from the from the main springs, um, and because of that, uh, even when the say the the length of the leg of, of the table, in which case in this case the, the vehicle, even when they're a little bit off, um, you're still reasonably close to the uh, a very even loading. So imagine the um, center of gravity is right in the middle. Uh, if you had infinitely um, elastic legs, then no matter what you're doing with the spring perch, you will always have 25% loading on each corner. But of course, you don't have infinitely uh, elastic um, Suspension, so uh, even with uh, say air suspension or something, the um, there is still some stiffness to your suspension, and uh, because of that, if the uh, say the spring perches were not um, correctly adjusted, then you can end up with um, some imbalance uh, between the, the the two diagonals. Uh, and as said, um, the st the so the stiffer your suspension. Uh, so say you're going from uh, normal to to aftermarket um, to uh, you know going from say factory up to um, I don't know K KW Club Sport or KW um, competition or something like that you're going ever higher with the spring stiffness then the corner balancing is really important because for each millimeter of adjustment that you're off in terms of your spring perch height. Um, the more off you will be uh, in terms of your cor corner loads 
um, with this stiff suspension. So, um, yeah, so by adjusting the spring perch heights, it's still possible to load um, one diagonal more than the other, as, as what mentioned. So in this example, if the if these two corners were really pushed out, then uh, this diagonal would be loaded a lot more than this other diagonal. So let's start with the particular scenario. The right height looks correct, but the corner balance, the, the cross balance is way off. Uh, this diagonal is significantly um, more loaded than the other diagonal. So what do you do? Uh, so then you have to extend the legs on this blue diagonal. So, but that means the right height will increase a little bit. So you've adjust, you've uh, pushed out the uh, these two uh, legs. Um, they end up with a bit more load than before. Uh, they take some load off the other diagonal. Uh, but now your vehicle is a little bit higher than before. Uh, so don't freak out retract the legs on the other diagonal. Uh, so once you do that, um, your right height will decrease and you're further uh, moving, uh, shifting load from this diagonal to the other diagonal. So then you're finished. So uh, scenario two, uh, the, cr the cross balance is correct, but one axle is too high or too low. So in this case, the front is too high, for example, so the corner, the cross loads are, are fine. Um, you simply uh, retract the legs on the axle that is too high uh, by the same amount, uh, left and right. And once you've done that, the vehicle, um, yeah, uh, gets to the correct um, right height uh, while maintaining the correct cross load. And um, yeah, you're finished. Uh, so, or alternatively, if uh, one axle was too, sitting too low, then you just extend the legs on that axle uh, by the same amount on the left and right. Scenario three. So the cross balance is correct, but one side is too high. Uh, so then you have to retract the legs on the side that is too high. Uh, so uh, here, because it's uh, front and rear, it's not as easy as uh, if it was like the previous scenario with uh, one axle being too high uh, due to the fact that the w the, the spring stiffness um, on the front and rear are typically different. Uh, typically the rear is a little bit stiffer but you know it can vary and also the thing is there's different motion ratio ratios and so on so here you have to experiment a bit keep an eye on the on the on the corner loads and uh, so as you settle the car down uh, make sure that uh, your corner loads are not uh, deviating from what they should be um, and yeah so once you finish retracting the legs on the side that it's is too high then your uh, vehicle is uh, you know uh, back to the correct height um, the suspension travel on each side is the same uh, roll center heights and so on will be correct and then you're done uh, the fourth scenario uh, this is a little bit of a maybe a bit of a weird one so your cross balance is correct, but uh, one corner is too high and the other corner is too low. So in this case, the front right is too high, the rear left is too low. So what do you do? Uh, well, you have to retract the leg on the corner that's too high. Uh, so in this case, the front right. Uh, but as you do that, uh, by retracting that leg, uh, you're taking load off this diagonal and you end up loading the other diagonal. So don't freak out. Uh, <laughs> this is normal. So uh, all you have to do is now extend the leg on the opposing corner that was too low. Uh, you know, reloading this this diagonal. So then once you've finished, the vehicle is at the correct height and uh, you have the co correct cross um, cross weight um, yeah um, and that's it I think those are the four main scenarios that I think I think anything that you really come across in reality is always going to be uh, some combination of all of these uh, 
and uh, yeah so just go step by step um, and just remember think back to the, the the basics what you're trying to achieve is to get to the um, a good crossweight uh, where everything is in balance 50% uh, on one diagonal 50% uh, on the other diagonal and uh, right height um, that is uh, that is correct and remember that by, by right height I don't mean the perch height because the perch height of the spring can be uh, you know somewhat different from one da uh, one corner to, to the other what I mean by right height is the um, the height from the hub uh, so from the axle so the middle so you know the middle of the rim to to your wheel arch uh, you know or however you you end up measuring it so like for 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 example in this in this example here you you might measure from you know the middle of this to the wheel arch or wh whichever um, reference point is is the easiest you wouldn't be looking at um, say the, the the height over here uh, but you'd be looking at you know the height from the um, the wheel arch to um, yeah to the axle. All right, hope it was uh, interesting and informative. Uh, Till next time.